Welcome to Love and Murder. I'm your host, Kai, along with host Shar. Many small towns hold secrets. The small town in this story has secrets on top of secrets on top of secrets. A preacher with a double life and a sadistic lust for control. Deep, merciless sexual desires that spiral into a plan for murder. But who's murder? Strap in to find out. Listen now. It's love and murder. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Love and Murder. I am your host, Kai, along with my co-host, the gorgeous, the wonderful, the beautiful. I'm Share. How are you guys doing? I'm back. You know, I didn't start <laughs> with the effervescent or whatever. What was I? What would I always start with? Now I forgot. The effervescent, the gorgeous. The <laughs> yeah, I didn't start with that. But anyway. This is Love and Murder. It is a weekly true crime podcast that talks about relationships gone terribly wrong. And when I say terribly wrong, Shar, how wrong do I mean? Dead wrong. Dead wrong. So if you're just joining us for the first time, I'm going to let you know this show talks about, like I said, relationships gone terribly wrong. So we do relationship true crime. We do it in a story format. It has mystery. And then we sprinkle a little bit of humor on the top. So if you don't, <laughs> if you don't like humor, did she just say he, he, he? <laughs> well, I meant to say tee, oh, but I said he, he. Yeah. So if you don't like humor <laughs> mixed in with your true crime, then I'm just letting you know that's what our podcast does. Uh, yeah. Check us out on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on social media. You can see the links below. And I'll also say it at the end of the show. If you just want to hear my gorgeous voice, you could wait till then. Uh, if you want bonus episodes of the craziest true crime stories, relationships Q&A, relationship advice, or Char's crazy stories, then visit us on patreon.com forward slash love and murder and become a subscriber. And it's only $3. Just become a subscriber of $3. If you listen to our show before and you like it, then please go to Apple Podcasts, hit that purple button and give us five stars. You can say whatever you want in the description and it just helps bring us up in a chart. So other people could find yep. us, your friends could find us, your family could find us, strangers could find us find us yeah (laughs) stalkers can find Um, us no please no (laughs) don't find us okay i had i had i had a flashback of one of char's crazy stories excuse me okay yeah so subscribe to hear it though (laughs) as as what's her name charlotte dobrave i think is her name she says subscribe oh i love that girl subscribe visit you should (laughs) check her out on uh, youtube but anyways Today, we have another pretty recent case. And the reason why I say another, if you look back in our episodes, episode 32 and 33, that was Mm -hmm. abandoned. It's called abandoned. And those were very, very recent cases. So we have another recent case for you. And this particular story took place this year. So the details are still fresh, but it sticks to the parameters of love and murder, which means it's a love isosceles triangle. This story involves toxic relationships, mental abuse, manipulation, and lies. So, Well, it fits into our show, that's for sure. Yeah. So it's just, what do they call that? Uh, Trigger trigger alert? No, trigger alert. It it does have abuse in it. So trigger alert. Also, Mm -hmm. I want to point out that this show, Love and Murder, is basically us bringing you true crime stories mixed in with our opinions. So this story is still in the works. So we're going to start out this case with the word allegedly. That, that's right. Allegedly. Exactly. Everything in here is alleged. Alleged. Yes. Mm-hmm. So be sure to check out www.murderandlove.com to listen to our other love isosceles triangle episodes like the crazy case of Sabrina Limon or the insane case of Kelly Cochran. When you listen to them, uh, I'm sure you're going to be like as stupefied as we were. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still stupefied. Oh, my actually, God. Those are crazy those cases. cases. Yeah. So it's time to strap up and strap in. And let's talk about the case of Christy Evans. 
I'm sure you haven't heard this one, Shar. Wait a minute, but what? Why does she have my last name? That feels a little creepy Uh-oh. on the end. Uh oh. Okay, let's hear. Let's hear. <laughs> hope she hope, she, hope she's not a cousin. Next of kin Uh-oh. or anything. So, <laughs> Christy Donnell Evans was born sometime in 1974. I'm not too clear about her exact birthday, but I do know she was born in Roland, Oklahoma. Now, for much of her childhood and early adulthood. Christy lived in Roland, where she grew up as a small town girl. I say this because, you know, small town residents and city residents, for instance, grow up very differently. Oh my God, so differently. It's like city people oh, are quite just differently. Used to I the agree fast, 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 fast. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and small time residents are just like, yeah, everything used now. To chilling out. Or yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got all day Is that how long they to milk these cows. <laughs> Not exactly. Oh, it so, was just the best. I mean, I can well, do she grew up in Oklahoma. Wednesday, so. They don't have Southern <laughs> accents in OK, right? Well, but OK. What about the Oki from Muskogee? Remember that movie, uh, Officer and the Gentleman? No. Yeah. So maybe it is kind of like a little accento and some kind of a slower I sounding never pitch. I watched that movie, so I have. No oh, idea you're what missing you're out about. on so much. But OK. I pretty sure i'm okay <laughs> if one of the lines is okay from, from a skokie Mahomie? no okay oh, from a skokie. skokie i think it was somewhere yeah. in oklahoma yeah i want to say i think i'm okay i think i'm all right <laughs> <laughs> so in high school she met david evans who was described as a pretty chill guy who gave off a vibe of being cool and nonchalant which was the complete opposite of me in high school I was a complete nerd, a dork, and I would rather read my books than talk to anybody. So, <laughs> then, then go on a date. You'd rather read your books? Oh, of course. <laughs> because you totally. could read about a better. Look, you can create your own romance. I wasn't even thinking about dating in high school. Right, but I if totally you if wasn't. you were curious, you could read your books and learn about these other people who have amazing romances, and you don't have to even do it you know, get into it or anything. I mean, so. I read romance novels somewhat, but it was like the same book, just a different title. Yeah, so I got bored exactly. of them really fast. Anyways, David was born in 1971 and was three years older than Christy. According to his mother, Jean Robertson, he was a friendly person who everyone loved and adored. He just sounds like a really great guy. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find much about David or Christie's early childhood, but what I can tell you is both had a pretty normal small town child. Uh, why can't I say that? Small town, small childhood. town childhood. Good Lord. I kept I kept tripping on that word even before. Anyways, Christie and David met in high school, but it wasn't love at first sight. It could have been the age difference or maybe they just wanted to be friends first. I don't know. But by February of 1991, which I was nowhere near high school at that time, no. when Christy was only 17 years old, they started dating. Now, things must have gone so well because only four months into their relationship, they got married. Wow. They were like, screw this dating crap. I, know, I want to just spend the rest of my life it. with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? So... Christy and David's life was that of a happily married couple, having a whirlwind relationship, having a house together, having a daughter, two sons, and basically doing everything together. That is the recipe for everyone being jealous of your relationship because it was so picture perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So David became a pastor of the Harmony Free Will Baptist Church in, how do you say this town? Ada? ADA? It has to be Ada. How do you spell it? ADA is just I ADA. guess, yeah, I would say that. Ada, mm-hmm. Ada. Eh. Yeah. Ada or Ada, Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world was that? <laughs> you've never heard that song? No. Just like oh you, my. but just like you've never heard of an officer and a, gen- and a gentleman. So, hey, we're even. It's like if you say Oklahoma, somebody in the crowd will just break out in that song. Like it, I know. If but you go in a, but if, if you, you go in a store and you just yell Oklahoma, okay. But if you say, but if you say officer and a gentleman, someone's gonna break out and say, "I don't want a Oki from a Skokie." They're gonna say that. So okay, all right, okay, touche. All right, 
Now, David wasn't always Baptist. He didn't grow up in a religious household or anything. And when he was growing up, he actually considered himself non-religious. Over time, things began to change. When Christy and David were first married, he started for first marriage, were first married, he started working at a Bible bookstore. When they started having kids, he began to, to develop an interest in Christianity. And now as time went on, Christy and David moved about three hours southwest of their childhood town. And David, being the charismatic and personally charming person that he had always been, quickly began to gain popularity in their new town. Again, complete opposite of me. Nobody will know me for about a year. They'll be like, somebody lives in that house? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally the opposite. Anyway, all their neighbors um, fell in love with David. He was cool. He was sweet. And he was just lovable. Like his mom said he was, you know, he was someone everyone wanted to be around all the time. You, I know a couple of people like that. I, I I have a friend like that. She is <gasps> amazing. Oh, I, I, I know a couple of people like that. Um, Do you know anybody like that? Yes, I do. Yeah. They're just, they're just good people, mm -hmm. you know, you just want to be around them. And anyways, um, but yeah, I'm going to point out the people that I know are good. It's not like this, as this story goes on, the people that I'm talking about are nothing like the story. Oh, okay. We, <laughs> they wouldn't okay. be on it. The, they wouldn't be on love and murder. <laughs> yeah. We've got to point that out because people are going, so what kind of people do you know again? Yeah. Like, right. Who do you hang out with? with? <laughs> So by this time, his interest in Christianity had grown and he had actually become a very devoted person to, to that. Um, his family really didn't seem to mind any of this. Seeing David develop a love of, you know, community involvement, it just wasn't an issue to them. So when David offered himself up to be a pastor of Harmony Free Will Baptist Church, they thought that, you know, it just seemed like the right choice for their family. This is just the next step in the direction their family is going in. Now, although David was charming and charismatic to everyone on the outside, mm. as soon as he came into his house and closed the door, oh. he was known to be pretty abusive wow a closet abuser who would ever know mm, hmm. most abusers are okay. in a statement that was released this year 2021 th this year as of this recording just in case you're listening to this in like 2025 or something right like that. <laughs> their daughter Brittany long who's now 28 years old claimed that he was violently aggressive to everyone in the household According to Brittany, she couldn't remember a time when her father was actually not abusive to them. He was so abusive to his family that it wasn't uncommon for David to slam the kid's head together, lift them up by the hair, and just do all kind of crazy stuff to them. But how do you suppose that, but how do you suppose he fell in love with his wife though? Maybe he just, I mean, I, I don't all think of he, that. Sh he, yeah, yeah, okay. or, or maybe it, Maybe he wasn't like that when he was younger. Yeah. I, I don't know. But again, remember, they were only together for a short time, four, four months, months before and they, they got, got married. married. A lot of people do change once you marry. So it could have been instant right when he knew that he had her as a wife. It's like, okay, now I can let, you know, I can get, get rid of this facade and be myself, you know? Yeah. And if you find out more about his personality, I think it's going to answer why they got married so quickly mm. and then he was able to show yeah, who he was. That's a shame. Okay. Yeah, I agree. When they were younger, David would make his children stay up all night to clean the house only to spill stuff and like tear stuff up and stuff like that and make them clean it all over again. Oh, no, he was demonic. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know where they do that. Top, okay. I mean, phew. on top of all of that, he would yell insults and spew hate at them while they worked. Oh, there, there was even a time when Brittany got a letter from her best friend at school and David saw the letter and he ripped it up and he told her, quote, I'm the only friend you need. Like, so, so far, what do you think about this man? Well, with friends like that, who needs enemies? That's the first with thing that comes to mind. Like that? <laughs> with a father with, like yeah, that? Yeah, with a who father needs like that who needs friends or enemies. <laughs> oh, my yeah, goodness. Right? Yes. That poor child. Yeah. Uh. Now, if you thought that was bad, 
Yeah. Well, things are about to get a little more stupider. Now, if you watch 90 Day Fiance, you know where I got that. Oh, I definitely from. do. You know, that's my show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I binge that show. <laughs> yes. Oh, so my gosh. Funny. I, I can never let that statement yes. go. Things, things are about, are about to, to get, get a little, little bit more, more stupider. stupider. <laughs> Anyways, David was one of those crazy men who abused his children and his wife. And he was completely obsessed with his money. He never wanted his kids to have any of it. And if they needed some money, they got to use it, but only with like strings attached. Uh. Like for instance, they could only use it the way he wanted them to. So if, I don't know, he wanted, they wanted a dollar to go to the store for some gum. He would say, no, you can have this dollar, but you have to buy Skittles, like something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, mind control thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay, like really? <laughs> but you and still get then, the dollar. You just have to get what I tell you to get. Yeah. That's yeah, very, right. Very that's that's manipulating. That's controlling. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So for Christy, it was actually no different. He was extremely stingy with his money. According to Brittany, he was so stingy that when her and her mother would go to like for like, like for instance, just Sonic, they went to Sonic restaurant drive through whatever it's okay, called. Okay, for like a, a foot long, you know, hot dog. Okay. Whatever they went and <laughs> I just got. decided when that. I, I would get the, what do you call that? The grilled cheese. So oh, yeah, good. it's good. Yeah. Anyways, but if they went there, when they finished eating, they would have to make sure not to leave a single drop of evidence for him to find. And he was probably so controlling that they had to make sure there wasn't even one crumb, like, he probably looked around like, where is this Well, how crumb can you tell from? it's a Sonic crumb? That's crazy. <laughs> he probably cleans his car so oh, well. Immaculately, that, yeah. And then, and then really looks it mm-hmm. over like. Meticulously. You know yes. I see crumbs here. Why are, th- why are these crumbs on the rug? Yeah. I didn't eat in the car or something like that, you know? So they had to clean all that up. So if she just wanted to treat her kids to something, she had to do it under like she was scared. You know, she was probably stressed out, but she wanted to make her kids happy, you know? Oh, imagine the ride home, though, not knowing if everything of all the evidence was completely They probably had to get a bottle of water, like rinse out Mm -hmm. their mouths and all kind of that's that's too stressful. Oh, my. One day, Christy warned Brittany that if David ever found out that they had spent money in like ways he didn't approve of, he would punish them. Mm. That's that's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Things were like really stressful and abusive in that house. And you can't even imagine what it was like for the couple to have an argument. I I, actually, Kai, I cannot imagine. You're right. I agree. I can't imagine because these are just general moments that you have with your children. So if that co- created so much stress and drama, I just can't imagine my day to day relationship with my husband. Cause you're not always going to no. agree on everything. There's going to be disputes. I mean, yeah, 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 definitely. So let me tell you what an argument would look like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when they were arguing, David, gracious, <sighs> lovely David would hold a pillow over Christie's face while he yelled at her and then he would like pin her arms down so she couldn't move or move the pillow or move him or anything like that so christy actually said that sometimes she felt herself suffocating but she would be too scared to speak up because he might find it quote disrespectful and then go too far in quote punishing her oh so she just sat there and suffocated like that's that's crazy well, I've actually experienced that, so I'm just going, okay, at least I wasn't the only one in the world. Uh, yeah. Dysfunctional and that, people. Folks, is one of the crazy Shar stories that you will hear if you go to our patreon.com forward slash live and murder <laughs> and become I don't a think subscriber I'm, but I don't of $3. Think, I don't think that our listeners would care to hear that, so that's why I never told that story. It's not so. about, I mean... It's not about really hearing that, but it's like hearing how you got out of it. You don't know who you can right. help. Uh-huh. Somebody might be in that predicament and not understand, like, how do I get out of it? So you might help somebody with that. Good point. Well. Good point, Kai. Because even now, because even now with this story, wait a minute, this is love and murder. So someone didn't get out of this story alive. So what's my point? Okay, let's let's hear the rest. <laughs> I, I just you had don't to, know that. I had to like think you of that. Like, wait that. A somebody <laughs> could have just—they could have just gotten stabbed in the leg. You don't know. Uh, you're right. I don't. 
But I know the title of, I mean, our, of our show. I, I was so. about to say, I mean, this isn't love and maim, but I'm just saying, you don't know. I could surprise you. You could, which you always do. <laughs> you, you always do in some ways. So and now I'm really curious to see how this develops and how it turns out. I really hope it's for the best on her end, for Christy. So you've heard everything that's been going on. Yes. And you hear that he's like harming the kids, harming her, damn near killing her, mm-hmm. smothering her to death. Mm-hmm. You know, stingy with the money, you know, they have to go out and if they spend money, they have to be scared of how they spend the money, like all of that. So by this point, you're probably wondering, like I was, has anyone ever called the cops on this guy? I so, No, I thought maybe she was too afraid, though, because he had so much control over his family. A lot of people in those situations, they won't call the cops, Kai. They're terrified. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that actually kind of answers the question. Okay. The answer is Yes. People have called the cops, but oh. it was never Christy who did it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said you kind of answered that question. There were several times when things got so heated that authorities had to come out to the house. And on April 4th, 2010, an 18-year-old Brittany and her two younger brothers were actually sent to live with their grandparents, their their mom's parents, so their maternal grandparents, after they reported an incident to the police that their father had physically abused them. So they called the cops and let them know that they were being physically abused and their mom's parents, so their mom's mom and dad, came and got them. Now, I searched and searched and freaking searched, but there doesn't seem to be any records of this by the Roland Police Department. Oh. And apparently that's because... They don't keep records from that long ago, which makes no sense to me because that I was mean, like only 11 what? years ago. I, I was going to say about 12, but well, in 22, it'll be 12, but still that's over a decade. But I mean, yeah. that's still, but, but, there, but there's closed cases that were 35, 40 years old that they're still, that they reopen in any place, in any city, in any jurisdiction. So I'm really surprised. You think it's because it's just a smaller town and they just don't expect that they need to keep these cases open? But if it's a smaller town, then I'm thinking you don't have that many cases there. So why yeah. would you throw away? Like, usually I can see like a big city like New York, for instance. Right. You might they throw have away so cl- many. Cases. It's like, exactly. do we really need all these cases on file? Right. Exactly. Yeah. But for a smaller town, you don't really have a lot coming in. So why would you trash the ones that you do exactly. have? Even though, even though it is from like 11 years ago, you don't know what's going to happen or if witnesses you'll ever need or just re- resurrect the the case. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Hmm. That that is kind of crazy. I never heard I of that like, actually. I just assume they stay for a really I'm long time. I'm thinking because it's a small town. Yeah, I'm that's really exactly what my thoughts were. It's a small town. Yeah. So we do know because if if you just go by okay, there's no evidence of this, and well, Brittany said this, and you know, we do know it definitely happened though because. Her brother, Zachariah Evans, reported that he was physically abused by his father. So it's not just Brittany coming out and saying something. Mm -hmm. It actually did happen. And even their grandfather, Ed Armour, claimed that he and his wife once took the three kids because it was too dangerous for them to live in their own home. Oh, I'm not sure if you heard what I said. Too Too dangerous. dangerous for them to live in their own home. And like Char says, what the what? What the what the? <laughs> it's what the what the? <laughs> oh, sorry. But anyway, like, can you imagine being a child and it's too dangerous for you to live at your house? Yeah, that is like, scary. That's like a nightmare. Because I, and this I, is, I just, I don't, I want for a child to be a child, though, and to have these great, amazing memories. And just imagine it's a, ho- a house of horrors. That's all you remember that's that's it you, you mean, can't make any noise yeah you're too scared of i don't know dropping anything doing anything like that's uh, that's I, I don't know imagine you uh, have your holidays to birthdays me, my like, thing no. is you have your whole life to be stressed out exactly you be stressed out as a kid exactly this is what i think i anyways. agree i agree kai yeah this is so crazy. with all that being said i'm sure you're like well can't get any worse than that i don't think well, so you would be wrong Hmm. it gets worse Hmm. the entire time that david was acting like this at home he was showing something else online as we already know you know in person he's this kind of person um 
he acts like like a good guy in person that standing citizen type line yeah. he's acting like that same thing mm -hmm. and only like in private he's showing his true colors or whatever what do you mean online what's happening online kai and i know they could hear uh, sorry if, listeners i just moved i couldn't sit the way i was sitting anymore and i had to move my chair and i know the microphone picked that up so i apologize <laughs> in case anyone's wondering is i know she sounds perfect and amazing but she's human so she had to shift i mean <laughs> yeah, I really did. So I'm sorry for okay. that sheer noise. <laughs> um, what was your question? I missed it. I mean, what's online? When you say, does he have a life online? Does he do something as in business or some type of a project? Or what is what you said online? He's keeping this facade well, of this. You yeah, know, upstanding he's keeping this facade as well as in on, person. online. Yes. Right. So, you know, like, for OK, so for instance, online, you go to Instagram. These people have these wonderful pictures. Oh, you yes. Find out, so lots of people do you know, that. I, I get that. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on Facebook, it looked like David and Christy were like so in love. So with happy. Other. Yeah like obsessed with each other mm -hmm. like they would act like they were still dating and were fresh out of high school their online profiles only had amazing things to say about wow. each other they would say things like quote my wife is the most beautiful amazing person ever and christy in her re in her post or even in her response to his comments would say things like quote how on earth did i get ever get so lucky with a man like you i love you <laughs> oh, with all no. my heart Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but I'm thinking to myself, talk about a double life. But mm. it sounds like it was forced on her end though. You know? But I was going to say, like, I totally 100% know people like this. No, actually, I think we all do. That's why I, I could totally relate to this. This is so relatable, Kai, because a lot of us spend a lot of time on social media, all ages these days, right? And it's, it's just a part of the life of the world, not just America. And there's so many people that live like that. And I know some of my friends and I will compare notes and say, did you know that so-and-so was miserable? She was unhappy. She was depressed. And then, you know, but when you're looking at their posts, they're saying things like that. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh my gosh. My life is so great. And this man is so amazing. I cannot believe I'm this lucky. And then meanwhile, they're, they're feeling lonely at home. They're being abandoned or, you know, they're just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's totally a double life. And it's really, it, it's not, yeah, it's not real. But do you think that maybe it was a way to kind of, um, condone, cons kind of console herself to feel, maybe pretend, you know, for Christy, like pretend that maybe things aren't so bad? Do you think that maybe? I, I mean, I don't know how that would be hmm. I don't know I don't know because she's still like she she might be typing this while he's standing right next to her like <laughs> what if he's what if he's standing next to her like you say this you smile you put this caption you do that okay Kai have you ever you don't create a lot of posts with your face or anything but like okay let me maybe I should use myself I can honestly say that I have put post up that I get a lot of comments, comments, uh, comments. <laughs> I'll say I'm like you today. Comments on, but I wasn't happy at that moment. I was kind of like sad about something, but I'm giving the illusion of something else. So therefore the responses are amazing. So, and then I, I'm complete with the post. I go back to my life and it's not what people thought it was. So do you think maybe this is just what the world does? And how many people could be dealing with what Christy is? That type of abusive life. We just don't even know. I mean, I think a lot of people deal with it. Yeah. And they just pretend something else. I, I, I don't, pre I don't post anything. I post business. Online. I know. Uh, I know. That's why know, I thought, well, I, uh, she wouldn't relate to this in that way, but got yeah, it. I yeah. I don't talk about what's going on in my family. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, you, you literally, if you look online at my stuff, you won't find anything about me. Like you'll just find. No, it's stuff, hard. Everyone, it. if you want to try, go for it. But trust me, she's very secretive, very guarded in the right well, way. Well, not secretive, not but she's not personal, personalized about her personal life. It's just, you know, a lot of business, but she, you know, she shares in that way. But see, my thing is I don't go deep, but I might just say having a great day or do a story with a really upbeat song and a beautiful picture that say, the song is saying happy happiness and this and this and that, but it may not always be, I might be thinking something else. So I just feel like 
even with technology, it's got us into this mode like that for a lot of us to show one thing and be feeling or, or dealing with another. This is really, yeah, just- I mean, I, I completely agree. And then it, it, it makes other people wish they're always wishing. Yes. My life was like that. Yes. Or, that's what they know. do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I had to explain to my daughter when she was younger because she had a YouTube channel and she was like, how come all these people have all these likes and all these and I only have this amount? And I'm like, you have to have patience. It doesn't happen overnight. And, right. pro- and these people with all these likes that started even either the same time as you or after, you do know they buy likes, right? They could have bought all these likes. Absolutely. So even if they didn't, Stay in your lane. W- worry about yourself. Don't worry about other people. Even if they did just get these likes organically, that's fine. Happy for them. Worry about yourself. Don't be jealous of what anybody else has. So and and that's a good, that. that's a very good lesson because a lot of times those likes are generated from phoniness, from fakeness, from people that are not being honest about their current moment. And if they exaggerate that moment, of course they may get more likes. But, but here is your daughter being organic and people don't want real. They don't want, they want fake. That's what, that's what they respond to. Yeah. You see, the and difference? the funny thing is she actually started getting a lot of likes and then she quit her channel. <laughs> <laughs> the world. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> I, I guess that situation happened for me to teach her a lesson. Exactly, then, I know, think that's whatever. what it was. It was just a moment in time of a lesson. Like this is what you've learned. She's like, ah, I'm good. I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. So, but unfortunately, this is someone's real life it, that's leading to abuse, and it's it's just it's just really sad. And I wish that people could have yeah. read through some of her posts. And maybe you can tell, you know, imagine if you could read through someone's post and their, even the look in their eyes, their smile, their captions, and, and say, People you, and don't say pay you that help. close of attention. You would literally have to pay attention to the person, look in their eyes, see that they're not happy, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. People don't pay that much attention. That's true. They look at the, the face cover. They just look at the cover and then start judging. And that's it. Yeah. People are, uh, people are way too worried about judging everybody and everything. And they never look deeper, find out if this, okay, like, what is it? Why is this person doing this? Is it a cry for help? You know, you, you, it is. Well, I, you know, you know who's good at that? that? Authorities, authorities are good at that, but that's after the fact when it's too late. You know, they, they, yeah. I mean, they have experts that that's all they do, but you know, unfortunately. But I mean, you can't really like, think authorities are going to sit here scrounging social media to find out who's putting out uh, a, a cry for help that's really not their job no, <laughs> that, no that would be no, impossible exactly i agree but what i'm saying is there's someone assigned to that after the fact because they have yeah, to I mean, try to figure that's out that's their like, job yeah, after the exactly. fact to figure out why this happened who did it yeah. blah 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 in your life it should be your family and friends who should be looking into this before anything exactly. happens exactly they're too but busy. Again, they're too busy that, liking everything. So <laughs> even with that, you you can only do so much. Mm-hmm. There's only so much you can do. So this social media aspect for them, this social media persona that they put out, it was actually also a great tool for both of them to be able to explore different avenues of their own personal love life. Okay. Speaking of which. For some time, David had not felt completely satisfied with his sex life. Oh. In Facebook messages that spanned from like 2017 to earlier this year in 2021, you can see David complaining about his sex life and he pushes Christy repeatedly to make his sex, his sex life now, to make his sex life more fun, quote, fun and quote, exciting. Oh. So, like I said, they didn't, he didn't say their life. Yeah. He said his, his. sex life. Because it's about yeah. him. Narcissistic yeah, about personality, him. of course. In a series of messages on November 27, 2017, Christy and David discussed the possibility of sprucing up their sex life. So really, it's just David told Christy the possibility of sprucing up their sex life, which to me, it seems like a pretty ballsy proposition coming from a man who is insanely physically and mentally abusive. 
Well, why would I want to have sex with you? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Unless it's at gunpoint. <laughs> I mean, even as well, your wife, you like, still wouldn't uh, want to do that. That's called rape. Yeah, what are you talking I know. About? I know. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. But I'm not in the mood to ever want to have sex with you again. I'm just going through the motions. If I'm unhappy, so why would you dare up the ante and actually try to encourage or threaten? You know, or convince me to open the well, like our, you said, our, narcissism. <laughs> exactly. That, is the, like, who does that, that is the plastic that holds this whole the, the glue the, you know, the, together. This whole episode together. Yes, yeah. exactly. So naturally, when David brought this up, Christy was hesitant about like the whole thing. It wasn't something that she wanted to do at all. Right. And you can see that in the messages where I guess he broke her down and she admitted that she was open to anything, but only if it involved just the two of them. Um, in her head, she thought that maybe David might be going for some type of like role play, inclusion of toys, dress up, stuff like that. You know, Shar sex life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. That's just what it is. Yeah. But David had a completely different idea. Oh. And with the gorilla sized cajones he had, <laughs> he asked her a big question. Now, in December of 2017, David asked Christy, what do you think she asked? I'm going to, what do you think he asked? What do you think, listeners, that he asked? What do you think he had the cajones to ask for? Sure. Now, you know, you're digging into my mind. You know how I think, though. So I already know the way that I think. I'm thinking that he's going to say, can we bring another couple into the relationship? Hello? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I get 10 points. He Yay. asked her Yay. how she <laughs> felt about a threesome. Right. Exactly. You win a new car. I don't know where it's coming from. You win from, a car. You win a, a car. car. You win a car. Thanks, <laughs> Oprah. Right. <laughs> because really, like, I mean, he's done all of this already. I mean, Why what could be worse, for really, at this point? Like, right. Yeah, he's already a dick. Why not escalate it? So, allegedly. Allegedly, dick. of course. <laughs> of course, no, allegedly. It may not have happened, but this is what we believe so far based on our information. Yeah, <laughs> and he allegedly went on to show how big of a male appendage he actually was. He told Christy... That he wanted him, wait for it, wait for it, and another man to repeatedly call her, quote, bitch, slut, and whore. Oh, another man, not a woman. Oh. Yeah, he wanted another dude. Oh, you know, in my mind, I was thinking it was a female. <laughs> no. He okay. Wanted it. I okay. Mean, yeah. Okay. Like, let me normally... brace myself for this. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little crazy. It's a little wild. It's a little out there. Okay. No. Another man, as if he wasn't physically aggressive, overpowering, and abusive enough, just on his own. Exactly. Oh, my. Exactly. That's crazy. Okay. He wanted to share that load of just a little bit with another yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just speculation on our part. Exactly. Yeah. So Christy responded saying that she didn't mind and she requested that the insults remain, quote, generic. What Basically does that mean? meaning. Yeah, well, that's what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> no personal attacks, no insults that are specifically geared towards her or her family. Okay. So just generic, you know what I'm saying? Like, not like, you know, Christy, you're a bitch. You're a slut whore. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that is just saying the word generally. But that doesn't mean it's me, though. How in the world do I decipher that? How do I separate the difference? Well, I mean, I mean, if you're in the act. Yeah. And maybe he just is like, bitch, and smacks her ass or something. Yeah. Maybe, like, she's not. She could separate it. How? But How do I you think do that? it's. She's already gone through years of, of abuse. She probably developed some way to do it, like to separate her online life and her personal life from the life that's in the house. Okay, but that's not my question. My question is, I can mentally separate it if I were her going through that. But how does the 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 other the other counterpart that's participating? Well, it's not about. It's asking, not about he. Pro she probably. Like if they go forward with it, it would probably be the rule to not make it personal. You could use these words, but don't make it personal. But just don't and say her name or something. Cause I mean, cause to me, it's just, 
Yeah, that's what okay, I'm saying. Gotcha. Just don't say her. Don't personalize got whatever it, statement you're about to yell out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, what do you think David said? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna say? No, like, yeah. of course, sure. We yeah, can do no. that, honey. Yeah, no we won't. We will be honey, totally you know? generic. Yes. Yeah. So you know, they started doing stuff, but Christy was still fighting it because she was like. She still never felt comfortable about the whole idea of threesomes. Okay. She was a really private person. Um, but she also knew that she could never really like disobey her husband. Of course not. Let's go back to the hot dog night, you know? No. And the grilled yeah, cheese. So can't, in can't her mind, that. there was really like no way out. But right. She did try to resist many, many times. Mm. I think that maybe she thought. Like I said, you know, he would get bored, stop asking, or maybe get annoyed like you're, he's asking too much. He's like, just never mind, never mind. Let's just not do it. So like maybe that's what he felt or she felt. That's why she was just like, she just kept saying no or maybe or, eh, you know what I'm saying? And hoping it would just go away. You know, at first with their new sex life, you know, spicing it up. At first, everything was okay. And what I mean by okay is as okay as they could could be. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Christy was just going along with it so she wouldn't get her face beaten. Right. But then in true David fashion, things started to get worse. Oh. I mean, you know, you give a person an inch and they take a they mile. Take, yeah. Well, I was going to say they take the whole road, the whole highway. They from do. New mm-hmm. York all the way down to Florida. So. Exactly. David started taking her to clothing optional parks, which I didn't even know was a thing. Oh, I've heard of beaches. They have parks like that. I've heard of like, so it would be like nude beaches or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when yeah, you said so parks, I'm thinking of a park no, and parks I mean, and they recreation. They had parks, clothing optional <laughs> parks. So okay. apparently there are parks like this. I, yeah. I didn't even know that. And then he started taking her to sex clubs. Oh, then wow. Then he started posting like vague advertisements and announcements uh solicit- soliciting sex on sites like craigslist oh wow yeah yeah like most things in their relationship christy didn't actually ever get to see the personal ads but she did admit that she felt a lot safer when in 2018 david told her that craigslist had completely banned any form of personal ads from their website so she was like Whew, <laughs> that's a there goes that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't mean david would leave her alone about the threesomes he kept requesting it and harassing for her her for it uh he begged her to bring home a coworker to participate in sex he also asked her to perform sex acts with other men and what do you think Christy said to all of this? No. Of course. She said Absolutely no. Absolutely not. To she all wasn't of it. interested. No. She was totally not. Mm-hmm. So, of course, David being David, he got increasingly Angry. irritated yeah. and demanded. This is weird. He demanded Christy give him a typed up printed statement all about their sex life. Like, what? Like what a, is he, her you English mean like a teacher? creative story? I don't know. Like, did he want it single space, double page, like <laughs> Ariel eleven font? Should it like, be, I don't. Should it be edited afterwards? Or like, right? Should I should I go through and edit all my oh, mistakes wow. and retype it up? Like, I what does it need a does it need a what do, what do you call the uh, the first sentence of a story? Um, An introduction or no? The what? first sentence. The first sentence. Um, I'm not thinking Dude, right now. People, I haven't been in high school for a while. Right, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, so he texted her, quote, and in all caps, must hear from you, end quote. And when she didn't do it, he verbally abused her. Now, in an hours long, in an hours long text argument in April, he called her, quote, a frigid bitch. Frigid? Yeah. That is such an insult after all she's willing to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's, I mean, literally the only thing she just doesn't, like, literally, listen to this. Imagine this. You love your husband so much that he's enough for you sexually. He's like, I don't want to bring in another dude in the relationship. I'm okay with our sex. And he's like, we're going to have another dude. Like, your <laughs> wife is telling you. I'm not enough. You suffocate not enough the you. crap out of her. Oh, my God. She is fine with your sex. And you're just like, frigid bitch. 
What? <laughs> I mean, that is just so. Okay, listen, listeners, please don't think we're laughing at them. We're laughing at the situation because oh, totally some of these laughing at the situation. Yeah, some the of these craziness. scenarios are just beyond. My thing is, how am I frigid when I was so willing to be wild and crazy and free with you with strangers? Obviously, I'm not frigid because I probably have to have a whole lot of energy and creativity, right? Um, in interaction to be a part of all of this nonsense. So yeah, I mean, (laughs) I I don't know. I mean, because I guess he wanted more, and she wasn't bringing more. It just it's just not enough. It's not enough. You know. Yeah. He also told her that it was her fault that they weren't able to hook up with other swingers whenever they went out. Actually, no, it's Craigslist's fault. Oh, you mean the when they go out? Okay, never mind. No, when they went out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He would tell her that you know they didn't like her, that they didn't want a second round with her. And Christy was like, okay, <laughs> fine. I'm I good have with sex that. With these I'm people good anyway. with that. I'm okay. Yeah. She I was thought, like, I wanted I, to have sex with my husband. That's exactly. it. Exactly. I thought he was trying to make her feel like she wasn't desirable or as attractive for people to want more of her. Because that that's a whole other level of humiliation, Kai. That's that's what he's trying to do. Literally, yeah. he's like, nobody wants to do this because it's your fault. Yeah. You know, they yeah. don't like you. And, this, and that's what he was trying to do. And she was like, okay. Like, literally, not in the sex aspect of it, but I went through that. You know, people, like, I I won't say who, but this person was like, nobody else will like you. Nobody else will ever love you like me. And I was just like her. Okay, I'm good. That's a relief, (laughs) actually. Thank you. (laughs) Next, let me move on here. Okay. I'm okay with being alone if somebody just doesn't like me for my personality. All right. You know, and just like, and just like a... David, just like this person I'm talking about, Mm -hmm. when that didn't work, when the threats didn't work and, you know, the mental quote unquote abuse in in terms of saying like, you know, nobody likes you and all this stuff. When that didn't work, David said he'd kill himself. Oh, it's getting very dark now. That's that's too much. Why? Listeners, this is another time where I'm going to tell you to listen up. Yeah. Strap in, listen up. This is another trick that abusers, narcissists, mm-hmm. and just general all around assholes. Exactly. Use, threatening to kill themselves. Now, listen closely. They do this so that you'll stay and make sure they don't do it. You know, you'll be, you, you'll want to stay and, oh, I'll stay. Just don't kill yourself. Like, you know, all of this stuff. It's a guilt they, trip too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is why they do it. Now, me, Kai, I'm not going to tell you what to do if that happens. As some people, and I've seen cases like this, some people are so narcissistic that if you do leave, they might just do it. So that you live with the guilt. So it's like they won in the end. Even I know, though yeah. they're not even there to see if you exactly, will live with the guilt or not. Exactly, because they've already gone on to the great beyond. But I, I know three people that happened to. Three. And what it does is it leaves a terrible guilt with that person too. That, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the lover or the, the person you left behind. Because they feel like it's their fault. And it's just ridiculous. And that scars a person for life. The one that survived, you know. Yeah. It's like, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to say this. Personally, <laughs> now that I've been through it, because the same person that was like, nobody will love you, this and this and this, they did this same thing. And I had that guilt and I stayed and everything. So now that I've been through it, if somebody were to say that to me again, I, you leave, you don't do that. I'll kill myself. I'm still leaving. Yes, exactly. And then if the person does it, I'm going to tell you this. Don't judge me. I'm going to let you know that I'm going to live the rest of my life guilt effing free. Free, exactly. It's You would have just done it for no reason because you're not going to win in the end. I didn't help you do it. That was your decision. You're not keeping me where I don't want to be. Now, I know to some of y'all, this is going to sound like a dick move, but you need to think to yourself, who's really the dick here? Me, who... I'm just, I'm not staying in a predicament, in an abusive predicament, just because you are trying to manipulate me into staying with a claim of killing yourself. Or 
the person who's trying to do that? Like, which one is really the dick here? Exactly. So, I, I agree with that. And unfortunately, some people still take that guilt because they feel like, oh, I couldn't stop it or I can't control him and he's going to do it. I should just you know love what? him and stay. You know, and, you, know. you know what I live by in life? The only thing you can control out is of yourself. your children, mm -hmm. your friends, relationships, your parents, you know, random people on the street. The only thing you can control in life is yourself. So you can choose to stay in an abusive relationship or you can leave. You can choose to stay guilty because a manipulator made you feel guilty or you can be okay with the fact that you did everything in your power to have a normal relationship and they didn't want that for y'all. So like I said, only thing you can control is how you respond to anything in life. This is, this is how I live. Life. Very true. Very true. So Christy never really believed his threats. He, to her, he was too much of a narcissist to commit suicide, but, but, she knew that he did have the power to one day kill her instead. And she has three kids, so she couldn't afford to take that risk. So that's why even though she didn't take his threats for killing himself, you know, seriously. Seriously, she thought about her children. Exactly. Which a good so, mom would do. Exactly. And this is for people who were like, why didn't she just leave? This is why she didn't leave. This is what her mind kept going through like he could kill her take her away from her kids stuff like this this is why she didn't leave and she submitted to him she became supportive quiet soft gracious everything a master manipulator would want in a partner so as one of the messages he sent to christy read quote give me something sexual something now that you provide not that I have to make it happen or beg or force. And then caps, all caps. You give me something. Well, you are begging and forcing. It's in caps. You're yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> how does that I work? I just wanted to read that message to you so you could see like how he spoke yeah. to her. And can you imagine? They like did all of this. Like obviously these, these messages are in DMs. Like he wouldn't let the world see this. Like no. But he's sending this as all DMs to his wife. Like, oh my God, what happened to talking to her in, per in person? I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I'm right here. I live with you. I see you when I wake up and when I go to bed. I'm here. Yeah. You have to yeah. resort to social media. My I direct messages. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I don't it's know. just really, really strange. Now, by February of 2021, David had told his kids that their mother was divorcing him. Now, my question is, why would you just tell your children this? Like, you know what? He's like, oh, my God. So these children are grown by now. He's still trying to mentally manipulate and abuse them. Yeah. And they're already on with their own their own lives. And he's, oh, yeah, he's not going to get Lord. back. I can't imagine. So anyways, he's saying, yeah, your mom's divorcing me. So Brittany, remember, she's their daughter. She started calling Christy. She called her for hours and hours and hours and just couldn't reach, reach her. She just wanted to find out, you know, if everything was okay and what was really going on. Mm -hmm. Probably also calling to congratulate her mother for finally leaving David. Exactly. Because like, the kids a lot of times want you to get out when you're that oh yeah. miserable. So, oh shockingly, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. you, you think you're staying for the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, but her reason for staying, I could understand because she thought he would kill her. You know what I'm saying? Not that, you know, oh, our family is going to be broken up. He thought he was like literally going to kill her and take her. But once your kids are grown and out the house, what are you staying for though? He, she thought he was going to kill her. No, I'm so saying, even but if she's your not kids are grown, the kids, even if your kids are grown and out of the house, if she's dead, she's still being taken away from her children. Like, okay. really? So you just I stay forever. That's crazy. I understand. I, 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 I can't say if I would do it. I don't know. In that situation, and now that I have a kid, I don't know if I would stay if the situation was like, I know he can kill me and take me away from my child. So I don't know. I can't speak on that, and I'm not going to judge her for that. It, it hits different when you're thinking about certain aspects and dealing with your children. If it's just like, oh, we'll be separated, and our family will be separated, so I'm going to stay for the kid. No, screw that. I'm leaving. But if it's like he can kill me or my kid, if I leave, then 
I can't, I don't know if I will stay or find a way to leave without like, and putting measures in place or I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. But what I'm not Uh, understanding is why was the, why wasn't there some type of a silent expiration on this pact? Even if she made a pact with herself, because your kids, what if your kids are 40 years old? You're still sticking around till he dies. Till okay. He so over? question. I don't question. get that. You have a kid. You have a kid and your kid is almost 40. Okay. Um, so you think it'll be cool if somebody kills you and take you away from your kid and your grandchildren? But it's not your kid anymore. They are grown men and he, women. I mean, your it, kid <laughs> is always your kid is always your kid is always your kid. I don't care if my child was 50. She's still my child. And I will still harm people who harm my child, even though she's 50 and I'm like 80 by that time. But she's you're going to give up the rest child. of your life though, Kai, to, because your pack with When I had was... my child, when I had my child, I already gave up the rest of my life. She's my child. She's my responsibility. She didn't ask to be here. I had a child. Mm-hmm. And... Again, it's not like if it's something so lightly as, mom, I don't want you to get remarried. That's, that's different. Or as, you know, like somebody's going to kill me and take me away from my child. There's certain, certain situations where I'm like, are you serious? I'm not giving up my life for you. Again, in terms of, I don't want you to get remarried or something. Like that's none of your business. Unless I'm bringing in somebody that's actually going to hurt you. But if somebody is like threatening, if threatening me saying, if I leave, I'm going to kill you take you away from your no that's completely different i guess so i know i mean there's plenty of people that stay for the children but that means until they grow up and they're on their own that's generally what they mean i did that's the same again thing. you're you're thinking one dimensionally okay that's a whole different situation like i said if it was just divorce and i'm worried about being separated so i stay for the kids that's never going to happen if it's about you're going to kill me then i might stay that's completely okay, different. Okay, it's called you relocate to an entirely different world. You know these crazy people state. still find you. Did I you know not that. watch the movie? I know movie? that, but I mean, I'm What's just that saying it. I'm also Lopez. just lying down and staying there for the rest of your life until I mean, they die. This is why I said I might be looking for a way to safely get away, mm-hmm. but you don't know because I've never been in that situation, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I can't oh, speak on that. Terrible. I don't know. Yeah. So, anyways. After hours of calling, Christy finally answered the phone. And according to Brittany, she was acting like robotic, quote unquote robotic. She was answering questions like with monosyllables or just like really short answers. And she kept saying over and over that she and David were fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. So after a while, Brittany was like, okay, well then. I was just checking up on you. And then she hung up. So by late 2020 or early 2021, David finally got his wish and he found a partner for their threesome. The partner they found was a 26 year old name. Now I'm going to try and say his name. K Khalil K A H L I L Khalil. Yeah, I think it's Khalil. Khalil. I would say that. Yeah, Demi Square. That is an interesting name. Yeah, Khalil Demi Square. And they all three, the three of them, ended up being sex partners for about two months. Christy and David would meet Khalil at a, at a local Super Eight motel. One particular day when they met up and had their fun and everything. And as they were leaving, Christy dropped a piece of paper on the floor. Just like real subtle, you know, subtle enough that David didn't notice. Um, And in the note, because, you know, Khalil saw it and he was like, okay, well, bye. He probably put his foot on it so David wouldn't see or something like that. Like, bye, see you next week, you know. And then as soon as they left, he picked it up. And in the note, Christy had written her phone number. Now, why should you be shocked and worried for her? Well, up until this point, their communication had been through Facebook or personal ads. Mm -hmm. There was actually like no phone numbers. None of them had given out phone numbers. So for Christy to give him her phone number, this was like a new level. Very personal, yeah. Exactly. And basically, Christy giving her, her personal phone number was a direct message for Khalil to pursue her privately. 
So, like, no longer a threesome. Now it's just the two of them. Now, it's not certain if Christy was simply looking for a friend or if she was beginning to feel attracted to Khalil. But what we do know is that Khalil did not hesitate for a second <laughs> to take <laughs> that you piece of paper why? and call her. He was like, hey, Christy. You, you remember me? Number? Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you left this number for me. I'm just calling. What's up, girl? So after this, Christy and Khalil started an intimate friendship. Ooh. For months, both of them would see each other outside of their regular, quote, love hours with mm-hmm. David. It was during this time that Christy confessed all of her inner emotions to Khalil, and she didn't hold back. Christy opened up to Khalil in the way she wanted to talk to someone for years. Yeah. Oh, could you imagine what that probably felt like to her? But she wasn't able to ever do that, really, or at least not no, since they she she couldn't first tell met her friends, husband. family. Yeah. She had mm-hmm. to keep keep up that facade. Yeah. But with Khalil, she felt safe, and she knew that he wouldn't hurt her in the way that David did. Mm-hmm. And remember, don't forget, people, she's been with him since high school, so that's like literally all she knew. That's her whole life, and not not very many people will hurt her the way that David did. So that was a safe bet. Yeah, and mm-hmm. but that's all she knew. So. Mm-hmm. This relationship with Khalil is something new to her. And the funny thing is David brought him in so he could feel better. He didn't even consider, again, narcissism. Once again, he didn't even her consider feelings. That, wait what a second. she wanted or didn't want. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe I'm bringing somebody in. She only knows me, but mm-hmm. I'm bringing somebody in now, somebody new in. And now she's going to she's gonna kind of learn about what else is out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't think about that, did he? (laughs) He didn't think this through. (laughs) Yeah, right? She felt in her heart that Khalil was a friend and a person who she can confide in. She liked Khalil and she liked that he gave her something that was more meaningful and hopeful. And, you know, Khalil ended up finding out what was going on at Christie's house. Oh. Now, around mid-March of 2021, David went out of town. He went on a mission trip to Mexico you know, like he was a pastor. And I keep he went forgetting to- he was a pastor. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. This is like newsflash. Hello. Hey, listeners, are you with me on this one? I totally, I totally like conked out or zoned out about. Completely forgot. Like, yeah. And it, it like 35 minutes ago that this man was actually a pastor. I forgot. That's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, yep. He's a pastor and he went wow. to Mexico to help young Mexicans who had be- been rejected an American immigration status. Oh, okay. So, Mission work. Got it. Yeah. Check. It had been a while since he had drove all the way. Well, he had driven. I said drove. It had been a while since he had driven all the way down to Mexico. So he was just going to sit. He was going to stay there for like a couple of weeks. He wasn't just going and coming right back. He was actually going to stay there for a while. So. During this time, Christy, oh my God, the freedom. She was oh, just can like, you ah! just imagine? Party, party. You know, the, uh, what's yeah. that movie where, where, uh, Tom Cruise is like, and he comes sliding out in his shirt and his sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, that was probably Across her. The floor with his, yeah, his yeah, socks, yeah, yeah. She yeah. was probably like, ah, exactly. Yes. Freedom. Yeah. Exactly. She, just oh she didn't feel like she had to live with this monster breathing down her neck 24 7 she didn't have to live with the threat of death constantly with her just freedom oh i'm getting chills just thinking about it (laughs) that three weeks felt like three good years for her (laughs) yeah man so but (laughs) i don't even know how to start this next sentence it's just like you have freedom but then she had Khalil stay over. Okay, like, that's why? part of the freedom. The freedom agreement. No, with but herself. why? Why it's would freedom you do that? Let's go for it. No, I mean, she just kind of really let let wild. You know, if I mean, I don't know if I'd be that brave. Yeah. So uh-huh. Khalil stayed over over while David was gone, and for Christy, it was a nice break. But for her neighbors, <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the nosy neighbors used to call the police. Yeah, neighbors, a small yeah. town. They all, yeah, love they David. all, everybody knows everybody. They know exactly what you're doing. They, they don't know David's 
inside personality. Mm-hmm. So they're just like, he's a great guy. And yeah, he's we're their pastor. The great guy and the pastor of the church. Exactly. So the neighbors are looking and, you know, they're kind of confused by why Khalil's white Mustang was constantly in front of Christie's house. They didn't know where it came from. They didn't know why it was staying at the house for so long. They knew David was out of town. So it just kind of felt strange to them as why this car is parked in the driveway. You know, and Christy probably was like, mind your damn business. Yeah, of but, course. But, you know, she, one thing's for certain, though. She sure didn't let their nosiness stop her from what she wanted to do. She was having <laughs> F-U-N fun. Mm-hmm. Yes. And during his stay, Christy ended up t- telling um Khalil about, like, completely how she felt about David like you know she probably said like she loved him but she wanted to leave she just couldn't take it anymore like she even went in more depth than they had gone in before because you know now you feel like really really free so that freedom was like I mean, you feel okay. so free that your lover moved in temporarily. Good, I mean, good I, Lord. where do they do I, that? That's crazy. It's that's a little crazy. too free, but okay. So now I'm really opening up, you know? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> back to their online persona. Just days before David got back from Mexico, Christy posted a comment to his Facebook, Facebook wall that said, quote, what a husband I have. And then David responded with, quote, hey, thanks. <laughs> They're so fake. I just, I can't get over that. It's so crazy. Like while Khalil is like laying next to him, she's like, what a husband I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's like crazy. Well, you got to keep up the, you know, the persona. So yeah, I guess. The facade or yeah. Mm-hmm. So when David got back, Christy acted like nothing was wrong. She continued being openly romantic and gushy and lovey dovey with David on Facebook, even though she just had a man in his house and in his bed. Wow. Christy went about her life with David as normal. But then one night on March 22nd, 2021, she woke up from sleep and she awoke to this horrible sight. Her husband's blood soaked body right next to her. Oh, Horrified, what? she called 911. Wow. And I'm going to put in the 911 call for y'all to listen to. Do you see a gun anywhere around him? <laughs> All right, so that's the one 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 call. What what country am I living Did in? You say one, one? <laughs> well, it is different. If there's one country where it's one one three. Please, so anyway. we're in the United States. Don't dial one one one. I know because you'll never get through. <laughs> You'll never get help. Don't do it. <laughs> so that was the 911 call. So if you didn't hear or understand Christy, basically the gist of what she said, I'll run through this. So Christy, someone shot my husband. He's in a pool of blood and I heard a loud pop. He's bleeding out of his nose and mouth and it's all over the bed. Dispatch. You think someone so- shot your husband? Christy, yes. Dispatch. Okay. Christy, he's lying in a pool of blood. Christy, oh my God dispatch it's okay babe it's okay at first christy told police that a stranger had killed her husband and then vanished christy i woke up to a loud pop you woke up to a loud pop yeah dispatch did you see a gun anywhere around him christy no i don't see anything now as you can hear on the call christy was shocked by some random home invasion where only her husband was shot and she wasn't hurt at all when police arrived Christy was very distraught. She said she'd never imagined someone would want to kill David and didn't know like why he would even be a target. Like why David? Everybody loves him. (laughs) She told police that she abruptly awakened and found her husband lying in a pool of blood. So basically what you hear on the 911 call. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what else to do, but you know, to call the cops, which is the rational thing to do. If you wake up and you find somebody laying next to you, that's all you're going to do is call the police. She said she smelled smoke and couldn't tell where it was coming from. She told her, she told officers that she saw her husband gasping for air and, you know, laying in that pool of blood. And she ran downstairs and ran outside to find his killer. 
She thought it must have been an intruder, but when she didn't see anyone, that's when she called 911. So the police began to do their investigation. They questioned all of the neighbors, asking if they asked them, what is going, you know what? We've been recording for a while. My, my <laughs> yeah. mouth is not working. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's, let's try this again. They questioned all of the neighbors asking if they had seen or heard anything suspicious. And they all said no, which is weird. Police questioned if they'd noticed if something was different between Christy and David. And they all said no to that also. A couple of neighbors did admit to seeing an unrecognizable white Mustang parked in front of Christy's house, which is the first thing I thought they were going to say. They'd said that the Mustang had been there for a while and was there the night of the murder. But coincidentally, it was no longer there now that the cops were there. One helpful neighbor said that they had a security camera and was open to giving the footage to the cops. Of course, what did the police say? Yeah, they're not going to be like, no, that's okay. We don't need that footage. We're, we're going to go do good old detective work on our own. <laughs> of course, they said, yeah, give us the footage. So when they looked at the footage, they saw the white Mustang parked outside the house. Police came back to the house and told Christy that they were working on finding the intruder and they would keep her posted on the case. Instead, they took the information that they got from that neighbor and they went back to the station and ran the plates of the white Mustang. They found that the car was registered to 26-year-old Khalil Square. And they also noticed that the white Mustang was only at the rev residence when David was out of town and was also there when the murder happened, but then it was gone when, you know, when they came back. Oh. Now, the police want to know, who is Khalil? Was he a friend of Christie's? Was Khalil not a friend of David's? Like, who is this Khalil person? Yeah, it's definitely a mystery person. Yeah. So on David, uh, on David, good Lord. On Thursday of March 22nd, Christie called her daughter to come over. They sat down and had a long conversation. After that conversation, Brittany called the police station saying that Christy would be coming in later today to give a confession. And a this confession? was a huge surprise for uh. everyone, even Char, apparently. <laughs> Absolutely, Char. The police were completely blindsided, even though... They were just about to make Khalil and Christy suspects. When Christy arrived at the station, she confessed everything. She sang like a bird. She told police about her younger days with David, about his abuse, her weak mental state, the sex capades, the threesomes, the personal ads. And remember when David had said that Christy was going to divorce him and Brittany called her mom and she sounded robotic? Remember yes, that? Yes, I remember. I was wondering about what that led up to. Yes. Yeah, well, that was because David was sitting near her during the entire phone call and he had a three fifty seven revolver aimed at his chin. That's exactly why well, I thought it would be aimed at her when she sounded robotic because she was in fear. You know how I said... Is there a gun up to your head that you had to do such mm -hmm. and such? But mm -hmm. it was the opposite. He was doing one of his suicidal threats to intimidate her. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's why she was sounding like that. And her daughter's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. She's like, yes, we're fine. Dad and yeah. I are okay. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. She also talked about the night of the murder. She said that she convinced Khalil to stay over while David was, was out of town. I don't really think he, she had to convince him that I don't much. think so either. It's called a new lingerie set. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> like it wasn't hard. He already moved in anyway. <laughs> yeah. So while David was gone, her and Khalil spoke and she convinced him that she couldn't take it anymore. Remember I said she opened up to him even more. She uh, she told everything. Everything. She, so she said she couldn't take it anymore and mm -hmm. she asked Khalil if he could end it for her. Not if he would kill her, but if he would kill David for her as any sane person would ask. But I of mean, course. I guess I've got I all guess my sense. I, Let me just ask if you're my lover. I think by that time, she probably was a little bit insane. Years and years and years. She of was a, probably a lot insane. So hopefully, hopefully, I'm hoping the prosecution and the judge will go light on her. Well, let's talk about it more. Okay. Uh, Khalil said, sure. Now, to, I, I Who can't says really, sure, though? I can't I mean, really <laughs> judge Christy because to me, I think 
her mental state by this time is like like literally cracking. It's like a mush in her head, but who says sure? But that Khalil quickly? was like, Yeah, sure, I got you. I'll, I'll do, do this. this. I'll go to the store to get a loaf of bread. Oh yeah, and I'll come back and just kill your husband. I'll just and kill your order. husband, sure, no problem. Wait, yeah. What? And so they started planning. After some time, Christy and Khalil settled settled on a plan. And the plan was for Khalil to come to the house in the middle of the night and shoot David with a gun and bullets that Christy would provide for him. All of the tools that he was going to use were actually David's and they were going to end up being used against him. Hmm. The night that David got back on March 22nd, 2021, Christy gave Khalil a gun, the bullets, and the perfect time for them to pull off their plan. So that night, you know, Christy and David... Uh, ate dinner, went up to their rooms, went to bed. But before she went to bed, she left the back door open for Khalil. And so Khalil came in around 1 a.m. When she heard him coming in, she got up out of the bed and started coming downstairs. And she actually made some noise. So then Khalil thought it was David who was coming down the stairs. So he hid behind the couch. But when Christy found him, which is kind of dangerous because he could have just stood up and be like, well, that's what I was thinking. He was just going to kill her by accident or shoot her. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, when they when Christy found him behind the couch, she assured him that everything was still on plan, that David was still asleep and that they were still going to move forward with the plan. So he did. He walked upstairs up to the master bedroom where he found David sound asleep and he shot him. And then quickly ran out the back door, sprinting, so none none of the neighbors would see him. Hmm. Christy remained in the living room all of this time. And then she walked back into the room and she saw David in the bed making, quote, a gurgling sound. Then she sat on the edge of her bed and called 911. That is some cold blooded she, SHIT. She took time to sit down. Like, yeah, just, she was just, probably like a, thinking a about all the years that she was yeah. making gurgling sounds with that pillow over her exactly. face. Exactly. She probably looked at him for like five minutes. Like, like I could just see it bastard. in my mind. She like, just ugh. stared at him while he was like, mm-hmm. and she was just looking at him and she was just thinking about all these years. Yeah, it's all adding up. It's all yeah. Up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I. You know what? There's no remorse not. at that point. How could there be? He had no remorse for her. As yeah. many times she that she was near death, and and then all the psychological torture and forcing her to do so many, just ugh. Like, Roast don't get me wrong. Do. Don't get me wrong, people. I do not condone murder. Like, no, we're not condoning murder, no. but it does. But certain things do lead you to your decision. I, I just, I think she, not within her power mental the state was. Yeah, her mind was cracking. I really believe her mind was cracking. Yes. So the confession shocked the police. It shocked the neighborhood. It shocked the community. And the church. Don't forget the, thir- the church. Yes. Don't <laughs> forget the parishioners. They all knew. They all loved David. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a person who preached about love, peace, and hope. And harmony. Yeah. And they thought he was like this mentally sane person that they can trust. Mm-hmm. And then Christy confesses all of this. And it went like against everything that he would preach to them. So it was just like the community was just like, what? Yeah, she just shook the entire community. Yeah. So with her confession, Khalil was arrested and uh, charged with first degree murder. And Christy was also arrested and charged with first degree murder. Both Christy and Khalil are being held in jail without bail. Oh, that's that rhymes. They're being held in jail. Actually, there's a song like that, Kai. That's probably seriously. you had a flashback. Yeah, but my thing is, why does she so easily sing like a bird on her on her lover that she cares so much about? Uh, on Khalil, no, I don't really. She that. told she didn't just say he did it, and notice she didn't blame everything on him like other people say. Like you know, people would be like, he did it. He couldn't. He made me. You know, she didn't blame everything on him. She was just. She probably was just like you know what I I don't want to live as a murderer, and she confessed everything. So. Okay. I don't really think she just blamed it on him. She didn't say. Well, he, well then he had no sense to, to not realize that if you told me all these terrible things about how your life is, why would you, why would you agree 
to carry out the murder when this person was insane in the first More, place. You have I would have been she like, if she said, hey, you have can to you know kill that my she husband? Was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, if, if somebody said, can you kill my husband? It would be more like, why don't you run away with me? Or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, not yeah. kill. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, find a way, get a divorce. Like, just the sa- that would be the same thing to do. Not be like, sure, I'll come over and just pop him twice. And then I'll go out and get some milk. And you know, we could make a cake. And then, you know, it's, that's crazy. Like, like I said, with her, I think she was crazy. Not crazy. I think she was starting like her brain. Something's wrong. Well, I feel like Khalil was crazy too because he didn't think twice about agreeing to something that re- that just that heinous. You don't just say yes because now you're putting your your life, your future, yourself in in danger, or you're changing your your entire future. You have no more freedom. If you go to prison, I mean, what are you thinking? You don't care about your life. Is she that important? You know. I think. It's- I think. You think he was thinking with something else, his other head? I mean, possibly? how could you think that much <laughs> with that head? Like, I, if I went upstairs and I asked my husband, hey, you want to kill somebody for me? <laughs> and that thing was pointing straight out, it would be like, <laughs> like no. yes, do it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Like, yeah. yeah. I Let's think that would, that desire would be. He got a hard on and decided, oh yeah, anything he you probably wants, would baby. pack my bags and just <laughs> put it outside quietly. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know, no, no, it's no way. I think he's just one of America's. Well, he was criminals. caught. He was just caught up in the moment. No, because he did no? it. There's no, no, that's stupid. Caught up in the moment is when she said it. You say yes, then you go home and think about it. You're like, wait, 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 wait. What is? Yeah, because he had time. Because he say? had time to go home. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no. So, anyways, Khalil pleaded guilty so far, and Christy has yet to make a statement. Brittany said that she knew her and her siblings could escape from that house as soon as they turned eighteen, but their mom couldn't. She said, quote, my mom didn't see an end to it. I don't think she had it in her to continue living that way. Christie's lawyer said that they will present her case as one of a battered woman. Now, the church released a statement after David was murdered, and it reads, quote, Harmony Free Will Baptist Church has been grieving the death of our pastor, David Evans, over the last few days. The circumstances that are now coming to light have taken us by surprise, and we are greatly saddened. We are aware that even pastors can succumb to human frailty. End quote. I don't really know how I feel about I that. I don't know quote. what that means. Are they saying that they're protecting him and they're and, and they're grieving or yeah, that's why I don't know how I feel about this quote because it sounds like it's being protective to him and screw everybody else. And they didn't say anything about years. the family. They didn't say anything yeah, about the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hmm. yeah, I don't like that statement. I don't like that statement. You just gave him a pass. So, Christy and Khalil were actually supposed to have a hearing on July 8th. But look, I'm telling you, I looked for this and I could not find anything about this. I need to know, did they go to trial? Did they not? So listeners, if anyone finds an update before I do, please send it my way. You can actually email us at noconductradio at gmail.com. I would love to know the update on this. Like, Yeah, please let us know because this is a very interesting case. We would love to know how justice was served, what the outcome was, anything, anything. It would just, yeah, because we yeah. can have closure. Because we feel like we should have close closure and our listeners should have close closure, but also the families more than anything, you know, that were involved. I'm pretty sure if whatever's going on, the families are aware, but I'm wondering if they're sealing this and not letting the public be aware ah, of it to yeah. protect her. I'm because not it really is still, sure. it's still an investigation. Well, no, it's not. It well, is. It still, is, it is not, still an investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, because there hasn't been ongoing. a sentence or anything. No, no. Okay. To either one of them, as far as yeah. I could find. So, I I guess I end the show the way as I I always do. So Christy Evans is awaiting trial. Khalil Demi Square is awaiting trial. Also, <laughs> I can't. Wow. I can't. I don't know. It's question mark. I don't know what's going on with them. I mean, then, we can assume that. But what if she doesn't even get sentenced to prison? What if she goes into a house for you know, uh, like a mental ward? 
I said I, a house. I don't, I don't know, know where the house came from, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, don't, they have yeah. houses like that, but you know, what if she is just under evaluation for so many years? Yeah, but usually I end the cases with knowing what happens. So right now it's like Christy Evans is awaiting trial, question mark. Yeah. Khalil Square is awaiting trial, question yeah, mark. Yeah, there is a question And mark. David Evans know. is dead. That's the only thing we definitely yeah, know. Exactly. And that is a story of Christy and David e- Evans and their sex partner, Khalil Square. Woo! So, listeners, what do y'all uh, think of this story? I'm doing what a do huge you think exhale right now. This is the outcome should be, uh, and what about Khalil? What do you think his outcome should be? Let us know in the comments. This took us an hour and a half to do. Yeah. It was a doozy. It was crazy. Also, oh, also, there's my exhale, everyone. I just can't believe <laughs> this story. I had I, no clue it was going to go this way i did yeah i mean uh, (laughs) listen let me tell you something Char was trying to get me to give up the goods so she could know who killed who and i was like nope she found out right along (laughs) with (laughs) y'all i did and i was even surprised by that whole because we've had similar stories where there's you know the the threesome that's brought in but i would say this one was more controlling abusive and just just totally just heinous the way that her husband brought in the introduction of the third yeah, party cause it was not it was not something she wanted to do you know what i'm saying it wasn't something both of them wanted to do it was just him and he forced it on and, her basically. and it was and it was also a man i mean that was that was different for some of our cases i mean that that adds a whole nother element of of insecurity and fear and you know, aggression and things like that. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot, Kai. Yeah. Wow. So I want to say before we wrap it up, I want to apologize to the listeners who probably heard me hitting my microphone. I got a new mic. I don't know if you could hear the difference in quality, but I got a new mic and it's an over the head one. And this mic is literally in my mouth. So it's so, but it's super sensitive. We keep trying, you know, just different scenarios each week and ideas like it's so sensitive it can pick up what's happening like 50 feet away you don't know no, but because i'm not used to my mic being there yeah. I, like anytime i put my hand near my face i would always ah. hit the mic so i was hitting the okay. mic throughout the whole show oh so no i want to apologize for that noise that y'all are hearing yeah if you <laughs> I'll guys are used wondering to it. yeah i'll get used to it and i won't do it anymore so if you like this story, please head over to Apple Podcasts, look for Love and Murder, and rate us five stars. You can actually find our Apple Podcast link on our website, www.murderandlove.com. That's love and murder backwards, murderandlove.com. Uh, go over there, give us five stars, say whatever you want in the description, say this was a crazy, crazy story. You, It, it took every kind of twist and turn that you, like, just, it was just crazy. What it does, it helps bring us up in the charts, it helps your friend find us, it helps strangers find us. But don't listen to Char in the beginning when she said it helps stalkers find us because no, 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 we're not about that. (laughs) Don't forget to visit us on Patreon and become a subscriber for the craziest bonus episodes and to hear your name said at the end of the show, depending on what subscription you get. Um, It is only $3. So go over there. You don't want to miss the craziness we have over there. Char's crazy stories, our behind the scenes of our life. As you can hear Char saying she was in these kind of relationships. You want to find out more about that? Head on over to Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash love and murder. What? We just had a crazy crime roundup in Patreon though. Yeah want to hear this one we had a crazy crime roundup we did. for uh october that's what we did and it was three well three i think different stories in that one, one. If i think abandoned no abandoned was one wasn't or? one of them if you listen oh, that to abandoned okay. that's like a, okay. a introduction that was one of, of our the kind of crazy so, yeah. crime mm-hmm. that we bring to you but no yes what we had last month it was a roundup of all the crazy crime for last month and it was three stories in there I'm trying to see it right now. Okay, it was three stories in there. Um, yeah, a woman had a cops called on a cop called on her, but, <laughs> and I'm just gonna say, but dot dot dot, a cowardly fatal car accident, and a picture that said a thousand words. That's right, I remember that now. Yes, these mm-hmm. are crazy. Yeah. Oh my God, the last one, the picture that said a thousand words, like. 
dude, when I tell y'all this is crazy, it's just that one story is worth the three dollars. Yeah, like I'm it telling is. Y'all. It was. It was another twister for me too. So don't give any hints. Yeah. Like y'all got to go over to our Patreon and subscribe yeah. for that story. Absolutely, Seriously. do that, guys. I'm telling you, I was going what. Yeah, Char the, was the? <laughs> Char was like what with that story. When I was reading uh, that story, I literally was like, oh, like seriously. <laughs> like when I was doing the research, that was a crazy one. That was a crazy one. So head on over to our Patreon, subscribe, and you'll get that story. Um, go over to our Facebook, follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash relationship crime, Instagram at love murder podcast, our Facebook fan group, love and murder fan page where you could discuss all this stuff that's going on if you're not a patreon which you should be and um if you just like true crime merch go to love and murder dot threadless dot com where you can get shirts you can get cups you can get tumblers you can get mugs you can get beanies you can get a lot of stuff that shows your love for true crime and a very very free and easy way to support us is by simply sharing this episode just hit the share button yeah, and share with easy. your friend exactly share One, on two, three. let's let's see what kind of uh, social media is there instagram tumblr do people even use tumblr anymore um, i don't really think so i didn't think they really did as much but i don't know i really didn't mm. think so <laughs> share on reddit share on yeah twitter share twitter. on I, I don't know TikTok. Look, we're old. Yeah, we don't TikTok, know about that's this a good stuff. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I as my my daughter ones. tells me all the time, I'm a boomer, so I don't know anything about all this stuff. <laughs> but share, you know about the social media, mm-hmm. so share, 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 and that helps you know everybody find us as well. And it only takes you like thirty seconds less, maybe less than that, and it's completely free. Yeah, a lot less. Now, that's pretty fast. Yeah, one, two, three. That's it. Boom, you've done it. As we always end the episode, like I said before. I think with Christy, she just, it was just, her brain was melting. I think she was just done. And we don't, we here at Love and Murder, we totally do not condone, condone, condone. We don't condone murder. That's what I was trying to say. No matter what the reason is, it's just just to end someone's life. It's just, that's it. No, 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 no. It's not okay under any circumstances. Exactly. But But I do have compassion when it's someone who's driven due to rage and abuse and hurt and mental, you know, just, she was just, I, I, there's just so many people that go through something similar where they should have gotten help years ago and they did not. So it's, it, you know, I, I just do, do have some compassion for people that are driven to that decision, but is well, it the right decision? Absolutely not. Not ever. I do. I, I just wanted to point out that, like I said, we Don't condone murder, which is why our motto here at Love and Murder is all all love love and and no murder, murder, y'all. Good night. Good night, everyone. Have a great week. We we hope you enjoyed the show. I certainly did, Kai. Thanks for sharing. I was going to say wrap it up, Char. Wrap it up. (laughs) (laughs) Good night.